If you're wondering whether you should spend more for the higher tier LG C1 OLED instead of the A1 OLED, that's what we're going to look into in this video. Hi, I'm Brian, a lead tester at ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Today, we're comparing the LG C1 OLED against the LG A1 OLED to answer the question of whether you should spend more to upgrade to the C1. We'll mostly talk about the differences between the two TVs and skip over similar or identical things. We bought the 55 inch C1 and the 65 inch A1 to test, but both are available in the same sizes from 48 to 77 inches. And the C1 has an additional 83 inch model that is not available on the A1. We expect all sizes to have very similar picture quality. All right, let's first take a look at the outer design, inputs and smart features. From the front, the only thing that's different between the two TVs is the stand. The C1 looks more like a dock and lets the TV sit lower, while the A1 has pretty simple feet that we often see on mid-tier to lower end models. On the back, they both have this horizontal texture, but the A1 is a lighter shade of grey. The other difference is that the C1 has cable management through the stand, but not on the A1. They're both very well built. The only reason we score the A1 a bit lower is because the feet don't feel as premium as the center mounted stand on the C1. There's not much to say about the smart features, they're the same. They run on the same version of webOS and they have the same remote with voice control. Before we get into the individual results for comparison, let's do a short overview of each TV's performance for those who want a quick rundown. Basically, the C1 is the more expensive option of the two, and for that price increase, you get HDMI 2.1 support on all ports, which means you can game at up to 120Hz at 4K, whereas the A1 is limited to 60Hz. The other thing is that the C1 gets a lot brighter, and that has two benefits. One is that it's better at combating glare, and the second and more noticeable benefit is that you'll get a much better HDR experience with really bright highlights. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into the test results, starting with contrast. They're both OLED TVs, so there's no difference in contrast because they both have the same near infinite contrast ratio. You'll get perfect blacks with no blooming around objects in dark scenes. This is as good as it gets when it comes to dark room performance. Next up is the brightness and SDR content. This is where we start seeing some of the differences between the two. The C1 gets a bit brighter, but not by a whole lot and it has better reflection handling. You can see in the photo that the reflected light is not as intense, and they both have the same automatic brightness limiter behavior, so they both get dimmer as more areas of the screen are lit. If you're really worried about visibility in a bright room, it's best to go with the C1, but again, the difference is not that big. However, the gap widens when you go into HDR. As you can see, the C1 gets much brighter, 628 nits compared to the A1's 452 nits in real scenes. The difference is big enough to make the C1 a significantly better choice if you're watching HDR content because you'll get more vibrant colors and brighter highlights. The HDR brightness also stays the same in and outside of game mode, so there's no change there. In terms of viewing angles, we found that the A1 actually performs better because colors remain accurate at a wider angle, but that being said, it might be due to panel variants and they both have wide viewing angles, so you don't have to worry about that. The color gamut is almost identical on both. Even the tone mapping looks the same, but there is a big difference in the out-of-the-box calibration. Our A1 has a much better color and white balance accuracy. As for the color volume, which indicates how well the TV can display colors at different brightness levels, there's one thing that needs clarification. The A1 scores better for color volume only because the A1's pure white is not as bright as the C1. In other words, the results are scaled to the A1's peak brightness but if we were to compare it to the C1, it actually performs worse in terms of absolute coverage. Gradient handling is about the same on both. Banding is mostly in the greys and greens, but it's just a bit more noticeable on the A1. These are OLED TVs, and as usual, there's the risk of permanent burn-in. It shouldn't be a problem for the majority of people who watch different types of content, but it's not ideal if you're the type of person to leave the TV on the same news channel all day. It's also something to consider if you're planning on using it as a PC monitor, because many elements of the user interface cumulatively remain in the same place on screen over time. You can learn more about our burn-in test here.
When it comes to the response time, the A1 is slower than the C1 to transition from a darker color to a bright one, which means you'll see a slightly longer blur trail behind fast moving objects. If you like using the black frame insertion feature to improve motion clarity, unfortunately it's only available on the C1. It can help reduce persistence blur and make the image clearer, but it also causes a drop in screen brightness and some people are sensitive to the flicker. Both TVs have a motion interpolation feature for those who like the soap opera effect, but the C1 can interpolate up to 120 frames per second, whereas the A1 is limited to 60 frames per second. Subjectively, the C1 looks better. The A1, on the other hand, causes a lot of motion artifacts. Alright, before we move on to the inputs and advanced features, let's quickly talk about stutter and judder. If you watch a lot of movies or low frame rate content, you'll see some stutter on both, which is one of the downsides of OLED TVs incredible fast response time. You'll see a bit more on the C1 because it has a faster response time. As for judder, the C1 can remove it from all sources, whereas the A1 can only remove it from a 24 piece source, not from native apps or an external device like a cable box. If you want to play video games or use the TV as a PC monitor, the input lag is the same at 60Hz, but obviously the C1 can go lower because it has a 120Hz refresh rate and an additional prevent input delay option that shaves off about 3 milliseconds at 60Hz. The more important difference here is if you would like to game at a refresh rate of 120Hz, you simply can't on the A1, so the C1 is likely the TV for you. Only the C1 supports a variable refresh rate to reduce screen tearing, and that includes HDMI form VRR, FreeSync, and G-Sync compatibility. If you have one of the new consoles like PS5 or Xbox Series X and you're wondering about compatibility, again, the A1 is limited to 60Hz only and doesn't support VRR. It's also the same story with the supported resolutions. They can both display all the common resolutions, whether natively or through a custom resolution, but the A1 can't display 120Hz. For inputs, they're very similar except that the C1 has four HDMI ports instead of the three you get on the A1, and they're HDMI 2.1 ports, whereas the A1 is limited to HDMI 2.0. Other than that, they both have a digital optical audio out, a 3.5 millimeter analog audio out, a coaxial, and an ethernet port. And finally, the C1 has three USB inputs, whereas the A1 has two. Unfortunately, neither TV supports the ATSC 3.0 standard, which is a feature that allows for higher resolution broadcast content. Both TVs support eARC, which means they can pass high quality audio to an external home theater system. Which brings us to our next section. If you're just using the built-in speakers, the C1 sounds better. But they're still TV speakers, and there's only so much they can do on a TV this thin. This means you're not going to get that deep rumbling bass. For that, you should get a soundbar with a dedicated subwoofer or a home theater system. Should you spend more to get the C1 over the A1? The answer is yes. For the slightly higher price tag, you get a much better HDR and gaming experience because it gets a lot brighter, and it has 120Hz refresh rate, as well as VRR support. The A1 is only worth it if you can find a really good deal. So that's it! What do you think of the LG C1 and A1 OLED? Which one would you get? Let us know below. You can check out all of our measurements on our website. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for early access to our latest results. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.